if I say KDOS, what do you think of? Most of you are probably going to say something like Kubuntu, Fedora KDE, Manjaro, and things of that nature. But there is this thing called KDE Neon. It's just most people forget it exists and most people don't really run it as a regular desktop distro. It's more like a KDE testing environment. And this isn't just me saying this, this is a well-acknowledged problem in the project. Recently at Academy 2024, Harold Sitter had a talk called An Operating System of Our Own. Now Harold isn't just forgetting that Neon exists, he works on the project, but put in his own words, this is how people feel about it. Then we have KD Neon, which is of course um, a thing. <laughs> a thing that distributes things. A thing of beauty. A thing of yes, it is a thing of beauty. Uh, <laughs> Pay very close attention to the audience response when he said that. Um, pretty much everybody agrees with this. Also, Katie, if you need someone to handle your video, um, please reach out. I don't know what you've done this year. In its current state, KD Neon is less like Fedora KDE or Kubuntu, and more like GNOME OS Nightly, where it's perfectly fine for testing KDE, it's actually great at doing that. But running it as a day-to-day -day system? Not so much. When it comes to the application, so things like Ocular, Spectacle, Caden Live, and things like this, KDE is in the business of first-party application distribution. So in Windows and Mac, this is in the form of installers. On Linux, they have first-party flat packs and snaps. But this same first-party distribution doesn't exist at the distribution at the distro level itself. They provide the source code for the applications, the source code for the desktop, and then distros go and build it and distribute it to the user. Now, this is not inherently a bad thing, and it's not something to stop but it does create a very different story, a very different approach to how individual applications are handled and how the entire KDE suite as a whole is handled. So in the case of those individual applications, if there is a problem with the flat pack for Ocular, for example, that is packaged by the KDE team. So you complain about a KDE application directly to the KDE team. But when there is an issue with the distro, you still complain to the KDE team, but there's this middleman in the way that's like doing all of these different things. It's unclear the environment the user is actually running things in. Any additional patches the distro might be adding. Maybe they have a weird different version of Qt. Maybe you don't know what version of Plasma it has or the version of Breeze, or maybe they pre-install some weird plugins. So even though every distro might start with the same source code, the end result being shipped to the user isn't necessarily what the KDE project expects it to be. So in 2015, KDE Neon was created as a way to try and address this issue, but it didn't really do that. And it is something to give to our hardware partners. Really good story, I think. Um, we also had like a, a slogan of sorts. KDE Neon provides an easy and elegant way for people to test the latest from KDE or use the latest releases of KDE software. Now, something that occurred to me while preparing the slides is the comma. Uh, it's, it's the fault. If only we could see it. <laughs> Again, the video. thought that using somehow became an afterthought. It wasn't intentional, but the sentence makes it look that way, doesn't it? And so that sort of lifts up with the first part of the sentence. Is the, we want people to be able to test KDE software, which Neon does very well, I would say. The using part, uh, uh, maybe not. But let's look at the story. Neon is based off of Ubuntu LTS. This comes with all of the benefits of being Ubuntu LTS. It's this nicely QA'd system by Canonical. It's absolutely rock solid. And on a server, totally fine, makes a lot of sense. 
spot for a desktop system comes with all of the drawbacks of being Ubuntu LTS. Once you're quite a while into a cycle, you have very old drivers, you have very old software outside of the KDE suite. But also this becomes a problem for the KDE software that's supposed to be up to date as well, because you might require libraries and other things that are not up to date on LTS. So you need to go and change out those nicely QA'd packages for other things that make it so you can actually install new versions of Plasma. So now you have this weird amalgamation of really nicely QA'd system and then other things just to make Neon actually possible on this system. As a basic example, they had to go and add Pipewire themselves because Pipewire wasn't available in the repos. Pipewire is basically a hard requirement for doing a lot of video related things under Wayland. And nobody really wants to deal with packaging and packages. So once you start pulling out one of these old packages, you realize that, oh, well, I can't just update this one package, I need to update the dependencies of the package as well, and those dependencies also have dependencies, and those dependencies also have dependencies, and very quickly, the system completely starts falling apart, it is no longer Ubuntu LTS. This is not a new issue. Yes, Ubuntu LTS still had some benefits, but they've known about this problem basically since the start of the KDE Neon project. The other problem is latest isn't always greatest. Yes, Neon is really good for testing modern versions of KDE, but sometimes modern versions have regressions and sometimes you don't want to be on the latest. Shifting gears just a little bit, more often than not, KDE hardware initiatives tend to happen by chance rather than by choice. This is an area that is really, really underserved and somewhere that KDE really has a chance to thrive if they actually put effort into doing so. When a device does release that makes use of KDE, this really acts like a two-way marketing opportunity. Now the speaker brings up things like a slim book releasing with a distro that happens to ship KDE. But I think the Steam Deck is always going to be the biggest success story here. Let's say in the case of that Slimbook though, they're shipping something like OpenSUSE or it has KDE. Why would they want to market it as the KDE thing when it makes a lot more sense to market it as the OpenSUSE thing? Yes, it makes use of the KDE desktop, but the main center point there is the distro coming from the OpenSUSE project. If KDE wants to be in this position, they need something that they can offer directly to their hardware partners that they can say, this is the pinnacle KDE experience, this is how you best make use of KDE. Now, in a recent blog post, Nate Graham has talked about wanting to do something similar to what is being discussed here. If KDE is as successful as Thunderbird and Wikipedia have been, what are you going to do with all of that money? I want us to fund the creation of a next generation KDE OS we can offer directly to institutions looking to switch to Linux and a hardware certification program to go along with it. Now this part here, uh, that's not happening. That's a lot of additional work. But, but we can talk about the first part there. Our speaker introduces a project called Codename Banana Obviously, a placeholder name. For now, we're going to call it KDE OS. So, what are the goals of the project? It should be the KDE operating system. Not to say that Fedora KDE shouldn't exist, or Kubuntu, or Manjaro, or Endeavor, or anything else like that. But if you want to have the pinnacle KDE experience, the experience that is expected by the developers, this is the correct way to use KDE, this is what you should be looking at. It might not be perfect for everyone, it might not be optimized for every single use case, but it should be the best way to make use of KDE, the best way to show off what the project has to offer. And it should be good enough to wow people. Yes, it's not going to be perfect for everyone, but it shouldn't just completely ditch the idea that other things outside of KDE actually exist. It shouldn't just be KDE. It should obviously be keeping security in mind because it's a modern distro. That's what it should be doing. 
it should focus on modern technology. So things like Wayland, obviously, and pushing forward through that direction rather than holding on to what we have with X11. X11 is still important for certain people out there, but the Wayland experience is what they want to focus on now. It should be useful to users, hardware partners, but also the developers of KDE. Because in the case of Neon, even most developers don't want to run it as their day-to-day -day system. These are the people that are dog food in KDE. These are the people that if you can't even get them to run it, this is a serious indictment on the system, you have completely failed. Whilst it should be mostly up to date, latest isn't always greatest. Sometimes there are regressions, and regressions do seriously affect users. 6.0 was a bit of a rough launch. It wasn't KDE4 rough, but it certainly wasn't a perfect launch, and I understand some people holding back just for a little bit, waiting for like 6.1 or 6.2 to release. But even though it shouldn't be always latest, it should have a means to test out the latest, to test out the latest git commits, and just see exactly what is happening in the project in its current state. It should also be suitable for use across different device form factors, so across phones, tablets, desktops, laptops, all in the same system. And it should have backing directly from the KDE project. It shouldn't be this thing that like one developer is working on because you're just not going to get a good distro if that is the case. If this is going to be done, it needs to be a big project effort. He also decided to show off the prototype in a way that honestly is kind of terrifying to do. So what do you want to know about the prototype? Any, any particular question? Show me a screenshot. I can do you one better. <laughs> yes. Never, ever, ever do live demos. Sometimes they work like this time, but there are plenty of other times where they go really, really badly. Currently, this is very much just a prototype proof of concept. This isn't something that is like widely being deployed. This isn't something that is like properly announced as a project yet. In the current prototype, it is an image-based operating system. It is an atomic distro, like Fedora Silverblue, like Ubuntu Core Desktop, and things like that. It makes use of the ButterFS file system, currently only supporting x86-64 hardware, with interest in doing ARM down the line, and only supports UEFI, because BIOS doesn't really matter for a system like this, and it's built using Makosi, which is basically a system from System D for generating images. It also makes use of an AB update system. So if one of the images breaks, if there is some corrupted update, if your internet disconnects, and for some reason the update is like half applied, which shouldn't happen, but if for whatever reason it does break, you can easily roll back to the other image and you can have as many images as you want to have stored, obviously assuming you have the storage to do so. Being an atomic system, you need a way to install additional software. So out of the box, it's going to support both flat packs and snaps. And you might be wondering, what are the images being built off of? So much like the Steam Deck, much like with SteamOS, it is making use of an Arch Linux base. Now, this doesn't mean that you're going to have rolling updates. It is an atomic distro, so it is an image-based update system, but when they are generating the images, it gives them very easy access to up-to-date libraries, up-to-date applications, and makes the whole process considerably easier than what they were doing with the old Ubuntu LTS version, and makes the process considerably easier than working with an Ubuntu LTS base. Also, the plan is to support both stable and nightly KDE images. So if you want to run the latest version, let's say at the time it's KDE Plasma 6.2, you can install the image just for that. But if you want to run, this is the build for the latest commits, you can do that as well. 
And as I said, this is still a very early prototype by the developer. It's not something available on the KDE website, you know, today or tomorrow. It's still subject to a lot of change. But overall, I'm very interested to see where it goes and if anything actually comes out of it. It's entirely possible it's just going to be like a one-off prototype and nothing really happens. They don't really reinvent what they're doing with the KDE OS and the only thing sitting around is still KDE Neon. But maybe, maybe something comes out of it. And if it does, I'm definitely going to talk about it then. So let me know your thoughts down below. Do you think this is a good idea? Do you think doing an image-based approach is the correct way to do it? Do you think it should be something... I don't know why I pressed that button. Do you think it should be something just based on raw Arch Linux? I would love to know. So let me know your thoughts down below. And if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really want to... If you, if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, Libero pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... What do you currently run? Have you used KDE Neon? That's a better question. Let me know.